Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining in. Uh, so today we've got a, a, a jam-packed session for you. Um, we are presenting Eagle Life and CISA, CISA Properties. Um, we work together. Sanders is a bias agent, as you may know, and Eagle Life, we are mortgage brokers. So we are going to present um, uh, a series of uh, sessions going forward just to educate ourselves, there's power in education. So I'll be the first presenter, uh, just giving you a, a, a brief on what's happening in the property market as well as what's happening with interest rate rates and what the focus are. And as soon as I finish, uh, Sanders will take the platform. So welcome along, feel free to grab a, a cuppa, grab a glass of water. Uh, they say uh, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. This is Jim Ron, this is not me. So uh, uh, stay put, uh, the presentation is not too long but the information in there is very, very important for you to understand either as an investor or as a prospective investor. Uh, thanks guys, so I'll, I'll share my screen to share my slides. Just bear with me one second. Are you able to see my screen? So welcome again for those who are joining us just now. I'm assuming you can see my screen. Uh, Gracious from Ego Life, your trusted mortgage brokers. We finance every dream. Um, as more people join, we'll start off because we've got quite a bit to cover today. So today I'm just going to briefly talk on um, a lot of things that's going on. I'm going to talk about interest rates. I'm going to pretty much lay the foundation for Sanders. So I'm going to talk about interest rates. I'm going to talk about the property to give a, a brief update on what's happening in the property market. I'm going to talk about investment strategies and I'm going to talk about SMSF. And then Sanders will come after me and then uh, build up from there. So going on to interest rates, uh, what have we seen? So we have seen nine consecutive interest rate rises since last year. So since last year, we have seen nine interest rate rises. And obviously this was not the prediction initially that the Reserve Bank had. The Reserve Bank had said they're not going to be any interest rate rises till 2024, but alas, interest rates started rising. Um, and at the moment, um, they are predicting there's going to be at least another rate rise or another two more rate rises. But if there is going to be another rate rise, 15% of borrowers will be in negative cash flow. And also, the, the reason why, so the Reserve Bank controls the monetary policy.
have bank pools is the interest rate lever, whereby they up interest rates to try and uh, reduce spending, reduce borrowing, um, which then would then start to see. It's just one of the levers. It's not all the levers. Um, so what we have now seen is uh, in December, inflation started to fall. So they expected inflation to peak at 8%. But December inflation recorded 7.8%, and that was a drop. And the economists are expecting uh, the, the inflation to fall off the cliff by quarter two this year, quarter two 2023. And you'll see the reasons why as I give you more data as I continue with this presentation. So Melbourne, so this is 2022 figures. Remember what they say that numbers don't lie. So in 2023, Melbourne, um, so this was obviously leading on to 2022. We had had 21% growth in the property market. That was in 2021. The property market grew 21%. But then last year, due to the interest rate rises, Melbourne dropped 7%. Uh, the median house price in Melbourne is now sitting at 900,000. We got to about a million median house price in 2021. The vacancy rates is 1.2%. The vacancy rates is the, the measure that measures how many uh, uh, houses are listed on the market for rent. So a 1.2 vacancy rate is pretty, pretty low. And rents, uh, asking rents have gone up 13.6% in Melbourne. Again, that shows there's an acute shortage of rentals. Sydney, Sydney had a drop of 10.6% uh, last year, sitting on a median house price of 1.2. Uh, Sydney got to about 1.3, 1.4 million median house price in 2021. The vacancy rates in Sydney are sitting at 1.3% and asking rents have um, increased by 17.9%. Uh, Perth is one of the lagging markets. Perth, uh, Perth did not drop in value. Uh, Perth uh, increased 3.9% last year. Yes, when all other markets were falling, uh, Perth and Adelaide ma market were increasing. So the median house price in Perth is now sitting at 585,000 with a vacancy rate of 0.5%. So a 0.5% vacancy rate just means that the, another tenant is moving in as another one is going out. This is the, the time that the, the, the houses are spending on the market in Perth. And asking rents have increased by 14.1%. Adelaide is another lagging market. Uh, it increased 18.4% last year with a median house price of around 700,000. Again, vacancy rates very, very low, 0.6%. And rents have increased 15.7%. Brisbane only dropped 3.3%. Median house price sitting at about 800,000 with vacancy rates of 1.1% and um, re asking rents increasing by 14%. So what we have seen or what we are seeing is um, the, the, that inflation is starting. So all the, the indicators, all the, the, the forward infl uh, indicators are starting to fall. So inflation is starting to fall. Unemployment rate is starting to rise. Um, so all the, all the indicators um, that the Reserve Bank work with are starting to fall, which is what they would want to see. And normally when this happens, and again, remember this is general advice only, we did not consider your personal circumstances. So consult your mortgage broker, your solicitor, this is general advice only. So um, what we are seeing now is the beginning of a new property cycle. All the leading indicators, all the inflation indicators are falling. Bad news is good news. Interest rates are at or near the peak. This is what uh, the economists are saying. And this could be true that we could now only just see maybe at least one more rate rise 
or another two more. But most are predicting just one more interest rate rise and that will be it. Interest rate rises are likely to start to fall by Q3. Rental yields are rising. So all the necessary conditions for a property boom are in place. So all the necessary conditions, we've got yield, rental yield. So rental yield, if you want to calculate the rental yield on your property, you annualize your, your rent. So how much rent annual rent you get divided by the property value, that's your rental yield. So all the necessary conditions of a property boom are now in place. Inflation is falling, unemployment rate is starting to rise. Uh, borders have opened, immigration quotas are increasing. There is less, um, there is more demand than the supply. And remember, building builders have not been building at the same pace. So even if developers would get an approval today for a development project, it would take approximately two years for them to actually get the product onto the market. So this is going to get worse. Uh, the demand versus the supply. And once you now hear the media say the Reserve Bank has left interest rates on hold or the Reserve Bank has cut interest rates, just know that we are going back to um, what happened during 2021, 2020 period. So moving on. So this is how the property cycle works. So the property cycle, so property is not always going up. Property is not always going up. But remember, what makes us fearful is the media, you know, what the one thing leads to another, the news, everything. We get all fearful and pessimistic. But this is what history says about the property market. So the property market goes up and it, it corrects. It goes up again and it corrects. So this is just the trend. The property market is not always going, going up. So what the economists are now saying is we are here. We are now here at the bottom. We have bottomed in terms of where we are, in terms of interest rates. So if you look at all the indicators, all the other indicators have fallen now, what's left is just interest rates. So you will see what that, what, uh, how things are going to pan out in the next couple of, in the next couple of months. So this is uh, basically giving you some background. I just wanted you to understand where things are. As many people come and ask, is it the right time to buy? When is the right time to buy? You can never time the market, but it's good to understand the data. It goes to understand, it's good to understand what drives the property market and where we are sitting right now. So like I said, this could be exactly where we are. And this all indicators are leading to the fact that the property market will be on the rebound very, very soon. So if you are sitting on the sidelines, this might be a time to actually consider, would you want to be fighting with 40 other buyers? Remember the supply, we are so short supplied in all states, we don't have enough supply. That's why you're seeing people are almost killing each other for rentals. There is not enough supply and this is only going to get worse. Then building on, on, on that, there are a few property investment strategies that you can use. You can use buy, renovate, and sell. Um, it, this is where you buy a property, improve it, and then you sell it and make money from it and then move on to the next uh, project. You can use a buy, leave, and convert. This is when you buy the property as your owner-occupied home using the minimum resources that you have, and then you eventually convert it to an investment to build up more properties. Uh, you can always use a buy and hold strategy. A buy and hold strategy is whereby you just don't do anything. You just buy property and you hold on to it because as you have seen on that property cycle, property will always go up. And of course, there's times when it corrects, but remember, as long as you hold a property for more than five years, it's less likely you're going to lose money from there. You can get into joint venture deals with uh, friends or business partners. Uh, you can do off-plan purchases and you can do SMSF properties. 
I'm going to really explain on a little bit more on SMSF because we're doing a lot of these and we're seeing a lot of uh, first generation migrants now really thinking about their retirement planning and getting into investing in SMSF. So what are the advantages of investing in the SMSF? Uh, their tax advantages, uh, GST is kept at 10%. Um, in SMSF, you takes that 15%. Um, also, when you reach that age, when you transition into retirement and you sell your property that you've got in SMSF, you don't pay capital gains tax. Um, SMSF can enable you to grow your retirement savings faster. Um, when you buy commercial premises um, in SMSF, your business can actually rent those commercial premises um, SMSF can provide a stable retirement income and you can actually pay off the SMSF loan quickly because the rent plus your SMSF contributions from your employer can continue to pay off that mortgage. So these are some of the advantages of why people are really looking into investing in super and taking control of their super. Um, as a lot of people may have lost money at some point in other asset classes, SMSF just makes you take more control and choose a good asset to, to invest in. Excuse me. So then leading on to this, why do we actually need to grow a property portfolio? I, I know it's, um, some people think, oh, look, if I've got a one house, that's, a, oh, that's okay. If I've got two properties, that's okay. Yes, there's nothing wrong with having uh, one or two properties, but could you be actually sitting on something that could help you pay off your mortgage very much sooner than um, in putting in extra repayments? So there is data has it that you cannot outpace capital growth in your extra repayments on, from your mortgage. So I'll just show you a diagram here. This is not my graph. This is from Iron Fish. But this shows you uh, someone, this is an investor who buys four properties over a 20 year period. Uh, the first property, they obviously buy it, uh, put in the deposit themselves. Um, they hold that first property up until year four. Um, in year five, they purchase the second one. We assume here yeah, that they're using equity now from the first property, they purchase the second one. But now because they've got a bit of a portfolio, they are now buying a little bit faster than um, what they did from year one to year four. Uh, in year seven, they purchase another one. In year uh, nine, they purchase another one. So this is their net worth over a 20 year period. Over a 20 year period, this uh, investor will be, have a net worth of 2.4 million um, without really <coughs> having done anything rather than just buy and hold uh, these properties. And remember, uh, this also would help them in terms of, of setting their taxable income. So the, the many reasons to invest is obviously we wanna take hold of our financial future. We don't wanna retire with mortgages. We wanna be able to really take control of our retirement, choose what we want to do. And we also want to be able to pay off those mortgages and work not because we have to, but you know, set ourselves up for a much brighter future. So thank you guys. So that's what I wanted to share in a nutshell. Uh, give a, 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 an update on interest rates and where we are going, what the predictions are, and give you a brief um, uh, background on the property market and what the indicators are saying. Um, so this is information that we get from CoreLogic, and this in information is vital for us to help you and help our clients understand so that when they're making a, a decision, they're not making a decision based on the media, but they're making an informed decision because the numbers do not lie. And I'll conclude by Warren Buffett statement that says, when everyone is greedy, be fearful. And when everyone is fearful, be greedy. So thanks guys, uh, at this point in time, I'll introduce Sanders to the platform to, to carry on from where I have left. Over to you, Sanders.
Okay, um, thank you very much, Gracious, and thank you everyone for listening to this to this webinar here. I am going to share my screen straight away because we don't have much time. So uh, we have got investors, I call you investors because the reason why you're attending this uh, session is practically you are an investor. So we have got investors from New South Wales, uh, the ACT, Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria, and Tasmania. So it uh, looks like people are really, are really pumped up and everyone wants to invest. That's, that's, that's most promising. So if you can see my screen here, uh, quickly, uh, it's just about, uh, you know, I am going to talk briefly about myself. And most of people, most of the people know me, uh, some might, might, might not. So today's topic is about how to create wealth using other people's money. So uh, Gracious has, has already touched on some of the strategies that we use, but I will try and you know, share as many as we can. So personally, I am from Zimbabwe. I've been in Australia since 2004. I've been working as a, as a, as, as a registered nurse, and I managed to look at different uh, ways of how I can actually build my retirement nest egg. So I looked at different investment strategies and I chose property as one of the, as one of the, uh, one of the ways of actually investing. You know, um, I, I had a very good job, but I knew it wasn't, it wasn't enough because the job was enough to send my kids to school, make sure they've got good, good jobs, buy a nice house, drive a nice car, but what was concerning me was the retirement because I knew I wasn't going to have enough money to retire. I looked at super savings, I looked at everything else. And most importantly, uh, there was no one to actually lean to. And like in Zimbabwe, where there's a lot of social networks. So that's when I started educating myself after having a lot of mistakes. Um, so now, I am a property investor, I'm a bias agent, and I do a lot of property developments. And I'm also educating other people how to invest. And I've even written a book on, on, on this because I, I don't want people to, to, to actually go through what I went through myself, where I, I, I wanted information, but no one was actually providing it. And even the information that I was getting, it wasn't professional advice. It was just information from the street. So <clears throat> this is what I was talking about. So over the years, over a 10 year period, I, I managed to, uh, to buy 15, 15, 15 properties. Uh, the, the, this, this, this was really my, my big dream. And as we speak, as of uh, December 2022, I am at property 18. So why am I doing this? So the book itself says 10 properties in 10 years. That was my goal when I was writing this book, but I've actually surpassed that. And I am at property 18, but my target is property number 20. Why am I doing that? The reason I am doing that is in the next five or 10 years, I'll sell 10, leave the other 10 debt free and actually be able to, to, uh, to survive on the rental income that take, comes from the other 10 properties. So pretty much uh, my goal is almost there. So I am a founder of two, uh, prop two businesses that I'm running. One of them is the Musisa Property and Consulting which, which, which really helps other, other investors to invest. And the second one is the Musisa Property Developments where we actually do our own developments and we help other clients do their own developments too. So this information that I'm giving you today is, um, is, is actually, uh, it's not financial advice, it's just uh, of general nature only. 
uh, do not act upon this information until you actually seek professional advice. Right, so before, before we dig deep into this, I'm really moving very quickly now because of, uh, because of time, but I promise you, I'll give you as much information as I can. So please brace up now because this is the start of my presentation. So I'll start with the investment tips. Obviously, uh, you know, we need to start by taking stock of your financial um, situation. There, there's no point saying that you are going to invest if your finances are not in a good order. So you, you need to be a very good money manager. You need to look at where your money is actually going. Be honest and brutal about yourself. You know, sometimes we want to do something, but we are not really serious. So if you are not serious, how then can you succeed? Are you living within your means? So what I mean here is, if you are earning $3,000 a fortnight and you find yourself spending uh, maybe $2,500 and then you are only left with $500, then there's a very, very, very big issue there. So get rid of bad debt and uh, credit cards. So, you know, credit cards are not, credit cards, money is not your money, it's actually bank money. But somehow we take credit cards up to, I've seen credit cards amounting to 30,000 or even 50,000. People go on holidays on those credit cards. So if you want to be an investor, there's no way you can invest with massive debt and, and, and uh, credit cards. You have to live within your means. You have to sacrifice now and enjoy later. So what I mean by this is uh, people start going for expensive holidays and then at the same time you want to invest. So it depends with your age, where you are in your, in, in your, in your investment journey. But I would advise you to sacrifice and not be able to enjoy now. Invest, aggress invest aggressively and then it, uh, you know, when you are in your 40s, 45 or 50s, or even 60s, you can travel the world, you can enjoy. But if you start the other way around where you are enjoying now, and you want to start investing in your 50s, it is just a dream that will never come true. What do you want now? And what do you want for your, for your, um, for your future? So this is about planning. You really need to plan. Without a plan, you disaster is likely to happen. So uh, do not be scared to take calculated uh, investment decisions. So people like uh, Gracious was actually saying, people want to wait and say, look, I'll invest once, once the recession is over, you know, I'll invest next year. But unfortunately, the property market doesn't wait for you. By the time you know, when you see everyone jumping up and down, that's when we start to try and invest. By then, it will be too late. So you need to have an investment plan and you need to act. And most importantly, the problem that I see every day is what we call procrastination. Uh, this is well detailed in my book, what it is and how you can actually fight it and, and, and actually overcome it. Procrastination is like a disease. Uh, it's actually more than COVID-19 because all, all, all it takes is, you know, you are about to jump in and then you actually, you, 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 you then move back. So procrastination will never make you any, any money. You just need to act. You need to start small. As I said, cut on, on expenses and act. Aim at building your retirement nest egg. So again, I'll go back to what I said. Do not start planning for your retirement in your, in, in, your, in your 50s because investing is not a quick rich scheme. It takes a minimum of 10 years to actually see, um, see the, the, the results. So the earlier you can start, the better. 
And we need to use our job or jobs as a stepping stone uh, to building wealth. So I know we always say our job, but once we have got a job, we have got two jobs. You, you know, try and use that springboard, use that money that you are getting there to actually invest because your job will never make you rich. And you need to learn from uh, those that have already done it. I cannot overemphasize this uh, because I struggled myself. I lost money. I went through a lot of hell. So if you can shortcut it yourself by, you know, um, using the knowledge of those that have already done it, you, you can actually move quicker. So today uh, we are going to talk about how you can use other people's money or the other word is leverage. So, you know, you can only go so far yourself, but if you are two, then it actually makes a difference. If you are three or four, it's actually even better. So the more hands you can have, the more you can do. So I always hear people that borrowing money is a very bad idea, but to me, I've actually experienced it. There is no how you can progress in life without using other people's money. So when I say other people's money, it could be someone else's money, it could be using bank money. But what I've learned is Australia is one of those countries that is very, very forgiving and very, very prosperous. So if you drive around today, wherever you travel, you can see you know, infrastructure developments everywhere hospitals being revamped. You can see, you know, there's a new McDonald's there, there's a new shop that is actually being, that is being built. To me, this is shows how strong the economy is despite all these negative feedbacks that we are actually having. So the banks will lend you money. So whenever I get money to borrow, I am always smiling all the time because I know this is the only way I can actually prosper. I don't just borrow money for the sake of borrowing money. I borrow money to invest. So by borrowing money, you are, you, you are using other people's money there. You are actually leveraging the bank money. Uh, it enables you as an investor uh, to get access to more money to purchase assets that otherwise would not afford. And you can actually uh, create future wealth um, faster. And it provides time value. So what I mean there by providing time value is, remember how long it takes you to save $10,000. It may take you a year, depending on the job that you are doing and how good you are with money. But apparently one year is a very long time. The property market will never wait for you. So if you can take a year to save $10,000, how long will it then take you to save $100,000? So if you are using other people's money, if you are using bank money, then you are cutting that time value factor. So uh, it's, like a, it's like a lever on your car. When you look at the lever on your car, it depends what car you drive but definitely your car will be having a drive mode. So when you want to drive, you put into the, into the drive mode. It has got a neutral gear, it has got a reverse. You can play music, there is, a, you know, wherever you, you can also um, actually uh, navigate, you can answer your phone, there. you can do so many things on the car. So why are you able to do that? Because the, that one lever there, it comes with the different facets. So this is what we want to actually happen. You don't want to be jumping on a, on, on a, on a bicycle by yourself. <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about, uh, about a lever on the car. So what are the ways that we have today where we can use other people's, uh, people's money? Some of the things are obvious. Some of the things we overlook them but I am going to discuss about this to you today. 
So I spoke about leverage. So leverage is when you actually use the bank or you can use other people's money to actually invest. Uh, borrowing to increase the potential uh, return of an investment. It allows you to enter the property market uh, with a very low deposit. I, I have met clients whereby we are chatting about how they can actually buy five properties in uh, five years. But the argument is always this, this belief that you need to pay your home first. And once you pay your home first, that's when you can start investing. I don't know where that tech concept is actually coming from. Because to me, uh, paying off your home will take you, depending on how the repayments that you are making, on average, is about 20 to 30 years. So depending on your age, that means in 30 years time from today, that's when you're going to start investing and that will be too late. So you need to have use the resources that you have to actually start investing now by, by leveraging on other people's money. So it allows you to enter the property market with a low deposit. So what I mean by here is in a normal world, the bank will give you 80% of the borrowed money and you are only putting 20% 20 of that. So on a loan of 500,000, the bank is giving you 400,000 and you are only coming up with, a, with, with that other hundred, with the other hundred thousand. So to me, this is this is this is a game changer because I can do as much as I want. The lender contributes the rest of the uh, of the funding, and the most interesting part that I want you to know is a tenant pays for the expenses. Pretty much, I have never seen a business where you borrow money. And then you put someone in there and they're actually paying your loan. This is really insane. Once I knew this was a way of doing things, I, I have never looked back. Depending on the purchase price versus the rental return, um, in most instances, even if there's a gap, the majority of the time, the tenant is actually paying uh, nearly everything for you. So the second concept is using equity from existing properties. So this, this is what I was saying. So if, if, for instance, you have built your home in the last year or you bought your home in the last two years or you have got investment properties, the chances are that you are really sitting on a lot of money that you will need to use because the money is just sitting there and actually doing nothing. So using equity from existing properties and you do not pay the tax on the, on the equity that you actually release. This is another interesting factor. So the money that you actually release from, from your equity, it is, never, it, it, is, it is never taxed. So this is the only time you do not pay tax. It allows you to get into the property market sooner and to at, at today's, uh, today's pricing. So if you are waiting to save $100,000, when you have got $300,000 sitting in your home, in your, in your equity, that's, you know, I don't know how long that, 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 that will actually take. So I'll, I'll give an uh, example of, I, I, I bought my home where I live in in 2006, and I have never moved out of where I, I live. And from the same home, I managed to buy five more properties using equity from the same home. So now I can actually pay uh, the, um, the mortgage from my previous, from, from, my, from the first home, because all I have to do is if I sell one of those properties, obviously I'll pay tax, but I'll take the chunk of the money and then repay uh, the, the entire loan. I am better off having four properties than just having one. So the second, uh, so uh, if, if we go back to uh, this equity, using equity, so if you don't have much there yourself, you can actually come up with someone else, if, if someone that you trust. Let's say they've got 300,000 in, uh, in their investments and you've got 200,000, you can actually come together and, 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 and start a very nice property portfolio or you can jump into, into, into property developments. So 
uh, Gracious has already touched on self managed super funds. This is a chance to manage and grow your own money. So I am not uh, I, I am not giving financial advice around SMSFs because I am not an, an, an expert in this area. But however, I am going to comment on what I've seen and uh, me personally using my own self-managed super funds to invest. So I started investing in 2015 using super. By then they were allowing you um, to, to actually do that when you had, uh, you had $100,000. So I bought my first investment in, in, in 2015 when I had 100,000 in, in, in my super and I bought a property for 350,000 and then five years down the track, it was worth 450. So I sold it and then recycled that money. And up to today, that money has actually grown and I've got four investment properties in my self money super fund. So I've grown the 100,000 into almost 1.5 million. So you've got a chance to manage, you can minimize tax and prepare for retirement. So where your money is sitting now, you are being taxed at 30%. I don't know whether we know this, but once you form your own self-managed super fund, you are only taxed at 15%. So you're actually saving tax. And when I speak to clients, most of the time, you, you are you're actually losing money there because you don't even know where your money is actually invested. And people have come up and said, look, I've lost 10,000, I've lost 5,000 over a grace period of, uh, of uh, time. So why don't you have, you need to take control of your own finances? And then again, same scenario, we are using the tenant to help us pay the, uh, the loan. So why are we investing in a self-money super fund? If we take a debt of 500,000, the tenant is paying down the loan. In, the, in, in 10 years, that debt could be down to 300,000. And then um, depending on the property market and whatever is happening, that property could be worth 800 or a million. So we are making money both ways. And again, because we are using other people's money, it's either you can do it by yourself, you can do it with your wife, you can do it with your family members. You can do it with anyone else that you trust. And for now, it's uh, you can do a self-managed super fund up to uh, up to about six members. So this is how you can use other other, other people's uh, money to actually invest. And the fourth one is using joint ventures. I love this one because I do it a lot. Uh, you may think it is daunting. How can you do joint ventures with the people? If you have got the right mindset and you have got the right people surrounding you, this is a very good way of actually doing things. So this is what is a joint venture. So this is two or more people coming together for the purpose of investing. And again, you can use, so I'll give an example where one, well, one person has got equity sitting in their home Let's say they've got 300,000, but they can't borrow for some reason. Maybe they are overstretched. And then what do you do? You go and look for someone who have got a very good job, but they don't have money, but they can still borrow nicely. So the two people can actually link together and, uh, and start uh, property investments. It can be short term or it can be long term, but I, I like the short term one where, you know, maybe we buy something do something to it uh, and then get profits. I'll show you the examples of all how these all these ideas can actually be utilized. Uh, the, the fifth one of using other people's money is the current uh, current loans or mom and dad's bank. I think you have actually heard about that. So this is normally used for, um, for our young generation that is hard to save money. So if you're a good child, you go to your mom and dad and say, look, I want to get into the property market. Can you, can you help me? So it is good for startups to enter the property market. It enables you to start with a very low deposit. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So all you have to do is maybe come up with $25,000. Uh, your mom or dad guarantees the loan from their investments, and then they give you the money and off you go. And you, you actually come up with a, an obviously an agreement on how you are going to repay their money back. 
or if you are a good child, they might may just say, look, we are just helping you enter into the enter into the property market. And then the sixth strategy, I hope you are catching up. I'm moving very quickly. Uh, the sixth strategy is called the low deposit with long settlements. I use this a lot. So this is when, you know, say you are buying a piece of land that is not registered yet. And let's say it's registering in 2025, it could be 2024, the longer the better. So all I have to come up is a 5% deposit of the purchase price. I don't take a loan, I don't take a mortgage, no one knows what I'm doing. And then I sit tight. So this is purchasing and registered land suitable for duplex developments. Why duplexes? You can do it on a, on a single where you're gonna build one, uh, just one investment. But for me, I like uh, those sites or the land that has got a potential of uh, building a, a duplex because that's where I am going to make money. So it enables you only to pay five to 10% deposit uh, no registered loan or loan repayments. And, and most of the time, depending on the market, there will be equity before you even do anything. Once the land is then uh, going to register, I'll show you again how you can use this strategy going forward. Now, uh, let's quickly go into the examples of um, I, I, I spoke about six, they, they, there's actually more to that. There's, you know, there's more complex strategies that you can use on, on using other people's money. But for today, I thought I like simplicity. I like simplifying things. Uh, when you get more educated, you can go into other sophisticated ways. But for now, we have got six strategies at our disposal. So now I'm going to talk about examples of properties using the uh, six strategies that I actually spoke about. So this is one of the strategies where uh, one of our clients used equity to actually invest. Um, and uh, when I was checking yesterday, I'm excited that um, out of the registrants, almost 20 of our clients have actually registered to attend. So knowledge is actually power and it shows how you are actually moving forward. So this is a property that was purchased using equity. So um, it was purchased last year and the purchase price is 528. The rent per week is, um, uh, the rent per week is 600. So you can see, um, you know, 528 and the 600. So even with the high interest rates, still the, the tenant is almost paying everything. So that's why our clients always use our services because it's very hard to find these type of properties. Because the reason why we invest, number one is making sure we have got a very good rental yield. And number two, we make sure that there's capital growth. And number three, we are guaranteed that a tenant is going to actually rent our property. And then we concentrate on buying more. So the rental yield is 6%. And this is another deal. So that was a direct investment, but this one is more of um, you know, doing extra stuff to it. So this is a single mom who actually came to us. They just wanted to use their equity to invest. So we found a house for them where we knew we were going to build a second one. You can see a townhouse on the side. So uh, she bought it for 870 and uh, land size is 700 square meters. And then uh, the projected costs for we had to renovate the house and then building the townhouse cost us 1.4 million. But you know, the existing house after some renos, they bought it for 870, but now they are selling it for, for 900. So it's like getting the land at the back for free. And then uh, um, we built a new townhouse that just sold for 800. So, and then they made a profit of 300,000 in a space of 12. Uh, so that's how equity can actually work. So instead of packing your money in your existing portfolios, 
you only take a debt for 12 months and then you can actually return it back where you bought it and you walk away with another 300k. So this, uh, the next example is using super. So this is one of our clients again that wanted a duplex. So um, we found a duplex for them and we purchased it in 2021 for 1 1.2 million and it's rented for 1 point, uh, sorry, 1,150 per week. And the current value two years down the track is 1.4. So they've already made 200K using, uh, using super. So you can see how, how, how powerful that is. And this is a direct investment using super. This is one of our clients again, purchased this for uh, 605 last year and it's rented for 700. So all these properties, as you can see, the rental return is higher than the purchase price. That's how you can continue buying. And uh, when we meet someone, always the majority of our clients in their first year will be having a, a minimum of two properties in uh, 12 months. And then we encourage that at least if you can buy one property every year, depending on your situation. Um, if you can get to five, great, but we are always aspiring for 10 as, as, as per the book. Why you sell five and then you leave the other five debt free. So the more investments you have, the better. Otherwise your, your retirement will be so, so, so bad. And again, it's a 6% return. Uh, now joint ventures, this is quickly uh, one of our clients again. Um, so two people came together and said, look, we just want to invest. Can you help us? What then can we do? So we went and purchased this dilapidated shit house. Uh, we demolished it, obviously. Uh, it was purchased in 2015. It's a duplex development. Uh, and then, so the, the, the house coming with the land was purchased for 50,000. 50, the land size is 901 square meters, construction costs 750 for the single level duplexes. And we realized a, a resale value of 800 per duplex, which is 1.6. One, 1. Paid all the debt, paid every cent to the bank and everyone else involved. And these guys had 400,000 um, 400, profit. So that's how, uh, that's how joint ventures can actually work. So if you are just by yourself, and you have got limited resources, there's no how you can lay 400,000 into your, into, your, into your pocket. Uh, this is another one where you're using joint ventures. Uh, this is a more complex deal, but it's just the same strategy basically. Uh, this is another two people that came in. Uh, we bought the land in 2022. It's a three townhouse development. So we demolished the house and then put three townhouses. So we purchased the, the land for 800. Land size is almost 700 square meters. Construction cost for the three was 1.05 million. And then total project costs, uh, the purchase and the construction was 1.85. And uh, value on uh, completion. So each of those um, townhouses was 800 times three is 2.4 million. And then they made a cool $550,000 profit. So, you know, this is the power of knowledge. I don't know how long it would take you to save $550,000. Uh, now, Garanto loans. Garanto loans, uh, this is the one where I was saying you can actually help your kids or you can help someone get into the property market. This one is an example of me doing it. Uh, you know, you can actually, I can show you how it is actually possible. So this is one of my children. He's actually 22 now. He was, um, he was working at Rip, Rips and uh, Beggars. So I gave him a challenge. I said, look, if you save 35,000, I'll give you 35,000. So I gave him a time period of um, 12 months, which was a year, and he did that. So we bought this for him. Uh, the land size is 1.6 million, sorry, 1,600 1, square meters. And this was bought in 2018. We bought it for 270,000. So because he had limited, limited resources, 
he didn't have any much money. So he, all we had to raise was 70,000. So <clears throat> now it's rented for 420 per week. Again, you look at how much the rent is versus the purchase cost. The current value is 520. We haven't done anything on this. So this is how you can help your children get into the, into the, into the property market. So if he sells that now, there's no way, there's no how he can actually fail to, 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 to then start investing or buying his, his dream home. So again, if you look at that uh, property, day, it has got multiple exit strategies. Number one, you can leave the existing house and build two at the front. As you can see, the land is massive or you can demolish the entire building and be able to put four dwellings there. So is, this guy is really set up for a, for a bright future. So again, this is Garanto Loans. This is one of our investors that we, um, the mom said, look, you are a good child. I am using equity for my own home. I come up with a small deposit and I will help you. So we just helped them purchase this uh, in February this year. And the purchase price is 490. Uh, it's rented for 600 per week. And yeah, that's, that's how uh, you can actually use a, a current loans. So there's so many strategies guys, but this is just uh, some of them that you can actually use. So again, it's a matter of consulting you may be gracious or myself to speak to us about your situation. I meet people all the time. They say, I can't do this. This is too hard. I don't have money. Like, but when you sit with them and look at their situation, only to realize that this is really, really, really possible. So I'll quickly go through how we actually help our clients get into the property market and uh, invest. So we act as your property mentor. We review your current situation and recommend uh, a suitable investment strategy. And then we do property research. Um, we assist and link you with relevant property professionals. So we are like a one-stop shop for, uh, for everything that you need because the majority of our clients are busy professionals, either they're in the medical field or you know, working pretty much, um, you know, working uh, Monday to Friday. They don't have time to research for investments. They want to invest, but they may not know where to start. And so that's why we are here to actually help you. We save you time and, and, and money. And because we are investors ourselves, we are actively in the property market and looking for our, own, for our own investments ourselves. So we do project consultants. If you are doing developments, we help you sell whatever you have created and those same assets can actually help you to make sure they are rented. So we help you grow your property portfolio pretty much faster than you, 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 you actually think. Because when you've got someone looking over your shoulders, you don't know how much you can actually realize. Uh, so we are there to mitigate risk and minimize it at, um, at all given costs. And we give ongoing education and support as, as we are doing right now. So yeah, it's really exciting to be in the, in the, in the property market. Again, there's all these questions like, when is this the right time to invest? Should I start now? Should I wait? You know, uh, investing is about research and the fundamentals. If what we are looking for can be answered today, why, why would you wait? The only mistake we do is we want to jump in when everyone is really jumping into the property market, which is called fear of uh, missing out. So we don't want to be doing that. We need to be buying now. For me, I am buying now because there is, there is no competition whatsoever. There is, but a property for 500,000, I can buy it for 450. You make money when you buy and not when you sell. But the mistake we do is we overpay for properties and then we think we're gonna make money. So I've got a special offer today, guys. If uh, anyone is willing to jump in and start uh, getting their situation reviewed, uh, we can definitely do that. So first of all, um, 
this is not for the faint hearted, it's for people that are ready and people that believe in themselves. So we are actually purchasing um, duplex land that is registering, um, say mid, mid this year or to the end of this year. And it's land for duplex sites. So for now, those that are ready, there's one that is available that you can purchase tomorrow if you want to. The land size is 501 square meters and the asking price is only 475,000. And you need about 300,000 equity. So it's either from your existing investments or if you have got another partner that you can come up with that. Why 300,000? Because that 300,000 covers the purchase price of the land. It uh, covers the development costs. So, so, and then, but when you sell at the end, depending on what you do, uh, you actually recover that 300,000 that you have put in the project, and then you walk away with uh, a 200K profit. So this is what can actually change. So we don't normally do this. So this, this will be offered to any of uh, you guys that are there today and are serious investors and you want to jump into this. So obviously we, we know you can 100% build a duplex there, we can help you with the project management of the investment, and then you do whatever you want to do at the end. But we can also guide you on what the best exit strategy is. So yeah, I've spoken about my book there. Um, so again, I will share this link here if you if you want to. I don't know if I can. So it's either, you know, if you haven't bought my book, you can actually get a free ebook. You can download it using the link that you can see there on your, or on your screen. It's, you know, it will teach you on how you can get started. There's a lot of, uh, is, there's a lot of uh, uh, different strategies. And then if you, if you are ready and you want to invest, so you can again, um, you know, book, you can book an, an appointment using, you use it using the link that is there. I'll actually leave that for a while. So you can, um, you can be able to, to, to book a meeting, either just consultation on how you can get started using your SMSF, or do you, are you sure, are you not sure about how to use equity and how you can actually invest like all the other people that are actually doing it today. So guys, this is, I've tried to smash everything within the given time, but next time we'll try and create more time. So, you know, we can, um, we, we can actually uh, give you more. So as Gresha said, this is the first series of uh, the presentations that we are going to do every now and again. Um, so yeah, tune in next time and uh, make sure that you are actually ready to invest without educating yourself, then that's no good. So I'll give this session to see if I can answer a few questions. Obviously you can't do much. I'll have to go into the question and answer segments to see if I can answer some of the questions. Uh, and there are a few other questions that I've tried to answer to people in the inbox, but there's some questions that are, are directed at you directly. One is saying, Sanders, do you have mortgages on those properties? And how are you able to afford to borrow more? Um, can we work more jobs to be able to borrow from the <laughs> bank? Uh, is, is it better to buy in a property or in a trust? maybe answer those two questions then I'll read the other ones. I've tried to add, answer the other ones uh, directly into the people that have asked. We don't have enough time to answer everything, but either book a session with uh, Sanders or myself, if you, you are not sure how to use your super, if you're not sure how to use equity, if you're not sure where to start, um, then we can be able to guide you. But I'll let Sanders answer this one. Do you have mortgages on those properties and how are you able to afford to borrow more? 
So this is a very this is a very good question. So first of all, that's why I went into property education so that I could uh, learn how the um, how uh, how the banking sector works. So for me to be able to buy these eighteen properties, yes, I've got mortgages on them, but the strategies that I've been using are positive gearing. So I've never gone into the negative gearing territory, which is something that I can explain further. But the properties that I'm purchasing, if you show, if you saw the examples I was showing you there, they are pretty much paying for themselves. So all I'm coming up with is the deposit to purchase that type of investment. And then the tenant goes in and actually pays everything. And apart from that, there's extra money left from those repayments that the banks consider it as my own salary. So it, my, my salary is actually always going up because I am not negatively geared. That's why I continue buying these investments. And secondly, most of these purchases are via proper developments. So whatever I leave, if I leave a property that has got a debt of 500,000, the rent is 600. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not paying me. So I can, my target is to buy more and actually buy more. So that's how I can actually answer that. Thanks, Sanders. Um, the next question was, can I buy in a trust or company? I think this is more an accounting question where you would need to sit with your accountant to really help you with the structure. Uh, the next one was for joint ventures. Does the bank look at your borrowing capacity or the expected project resale value when considering lending? Um, this one, they're different funding, they're private lenders. So apart from the mainstream banks, they're also private lenders and each scenario is very different. It could be a joint venture for a duplex that Sanders has talked about, uh, which could be well-funded by the mainstream lenders, or it could be six units that may need a funding with a private um, lender where you can do pre-sales. So there are a few different funding methods and um, uh, all of them work depending on any scenario. Then another question is, which areas are you buying? I think this is for you to book a session with Sanders um, if you need to understand um, where to buy and which areas are good and you can be able to guide you on that one. How much balance should be in super? Uh, Sanders, do you wanna answer that one? So, so again, um, we really recommend clients having at least 200K in their super fund. Again, if you've got 100, this is the high time you can come up with another friend or family member to come with that 200K because the property market has really gone up very high. So you need more money in your super fund. And again, when you buy, you don't want to empty the entire account. You need to leave extra money in there. So to answer that question, at least 200K. So first home buyers, yes, there's a question here. For a first time home buyer without enough deposit, what advice would you give regarding going? So there's a lot uh, in the first home buyer space. There's the first home loan deposit scheme, which can assist you to get into the market with only a 5% deposit or the guarantor, the parent, or parent guarantor that uh, Sanders is covered. So there are a few options for first home buyers. Um, I think where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, if you, I have 35K in a regional area, am I able to start something or I need to save a lot more? Again, this is um, a, a, a personal question where you need to sit down and weigh your options, your investment strategy, discuss your investment strategy and what 35K can actually get you. Sanders, do you do tax planning? Sanders, can you answer that one? Sorry, sorry, which, which question is that? Sanders, do you do tax planning? No, no I, I am not a tax agent. So uh, you need to consult your accountant or your financial planner to actually look at your accounting. But as a business, we have got professionals that we work with that are dependent on any form of a proper transaction. Thank you. How do I avoid LMI when borrowing? Uh, there are a lot of options to avoid LMI. There is a LMI waiver for registered nurses. Uh, you can only put a 10% deposit and not put LMI. Or if you use the strategy of using equity, we could pull out enough equity for you to purchase without actually uh, 
uh, do, uh, paying LMI. So there are a few strategies on that one. Does my student loan affect my borrowing capacity? Yes, it does. But again, there are ways to work around each scenario. Um, we may need to sit down and uh, work out how much you've got in savings and what sort of borrowing power we can release if we get rid of the student loan. From your own knowledge, is there a property holding entity that I can use as a foreigner to invest in property, for example, trust or business entity? Again, this is an accounting question where it comes to structure. You need to sit down with your accountant and um, understand which structure would be best. What do you charge for consultations? Um, at Eagle Life, we don't charge a fee. We get paid by the lenders as mortgage brokers, but buyers agents uh, charge a fee. Sanders, they're asking how much do you charge for consultations? Look, this is a broad question. It really depends mm -hmm. with your circumstances and the type of strategy that we are embarking on. So our fees are never fixed. It is they are they are they are dependent on a, on 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 the appropriate investment that you actually have at that time. Thank you. So this is about five twelve. We've gone twelve minutes over time. Uh, some of the questions may not actually be able to answer everyone here. But um, you've got our details, uh, Ego Life Mortgage Brokers. We are also property investors. We've got more than 10 properties. Uh, Sanders has got more than 18. So you are not talking to amateurs, but you're actually talking with people who are walking the walk. So book a session with Sanders or book a session with myself, and we'll be able to help you to start from somewhere. We all started from somewhere. So we'll be able to help you over to you, Sanders. Yeah, again, thank you very much for everyone who took their time out of their busy family schedules to actually attend this. I can't overemphasize how important education is. Guys, we are in a very rich country where we really need to start planning for our financial future. Um, you know, you can work as much as you want, but you really need to plan. You need to, uh, you know, manage your money better. You need to use professionals that are already doing it so that you know tomorrow you don't want to work until you are 70 years old. If the government will force you to work as much as you can stand, if you can work into your 80s, then to me that is not a very good option. So we we have got a way of actually doing this. Property is one of the ways that we can do it. So you know, let us use these sessions wisely. And most importantly, as Gracia said, all you need to do is book a free 45 minute consultation. If there's an issue we can't help you, that's fine. But at least we can put you and explain to you what areas you need to actually tighten up to be able to move forward. Because without a plan, you are just guessing. Without a plan, you're just wasting time. And procrastination is a very dangerous disease. We really need to eradicate it. So thank you very much, Gracious. Thank you, everyone, for attending these events. And watch on for more events coming on. And yeah, happy investing. <laughs>